SharePoint 2010 has some improved capabilities around policy processes. In this demo, I'm going to explore the scenario of having a standard process to dispose of old, unused documents. In this scenario, documents are created as part of a project and then no longer used once the project ends. But employees can't always be relied upon to delete the documents at the end of the project, and sometimes documents need to be kept for reference. I'm going to create an information management policy for project documentation in a single document library, but this could be applied on a much larger scale. Here I have my document library. I'll go to the settings for this library. Now I get shown various menu options. I'll choose Information Management Policy Settings. I get to choose which type of content to apply my policy to. I'll choose Project Documentation. Then it gives me options for creating the policy. The policy type I want in this stage is Retention. When I click this checkbox, You'll notice the difference between SharePoint 2007 and SharePoint 2010. Before, I would get shown a space to enter policy details. Now, I get this link to add a retention stage. Clicking on this opens a new dialog. First, I need to choose when this stage should activate. This could be based on any document property that has a date type. I'll simply use the out-of-the-box Modified Date field. And I'll set an offset for six months. This means that this stage will start six months after the last time the document was modified, so it won't occur when the document is still being used and edited. Next, I pick an action. There are a few more options than there were in 2007. I can move the document to a new location, declare it as a record, delete previous versions and so on. But the most useful is probably still the Start a Workflow option. This allows you to define your own custom actions to be called in the policy. Here I'll choose this Disposal Demo Workflow. This workflow sends out an email to the person who created the document and ask them to decide whether or not the document should be kept. If they say it should, the modified date is updated, so the policy won't be called for another six months. If they say the document is no longer needed, the document will be deleted. But people often ignore or forget about standard email alerts, so I can set a recurrence. This means that the stage will happen again and again until the next stage occurs or the process is completed. I'll set a recurrence of seven days. So until they respond, the person who created the document will get an email once a week asking if it needs to be kept. It's possible someone will continue to not respond or that the document might have been created by someone no longer at the organization. I could build logic into my workflow to handle these different scenarios, or I could simply choose to add another stage. This stage will start eight months after the last modified date. This time, I'll choose to delete the document. The multi-stage disposition makes it easier to build more complex records management policies while making use of reusable components. It would be a simple matter now for me to reuse my workflow as part of another policy but change the timings or alter the stages afterwards. Combined with the ability to build no-code reusable workflows in SharePoint Designer 2010, you now have a lot of power over your document management without having to rely on custom development. This was a very simple example but now your policies can involve multiple actions, workflows and recurring elements without necessarily having to write any code.